Hello Dicks and Ghouls. Today we're doing a tag, the Malazan Raider tag by Counselor of Moon's Spawn. And it's a fun tag, it's about people who are reading Malazan Book of the Fallen or have read Malazan Book of the Fallen. And since I'm planning to do a reread the next two years, it's a great opportunity to do this one. We'll go straight to the questions. Question number one, how did you find out about Malazan? It's Malazan, right? We'll go back to 2002-2003. I was in a local role-playing fair and somebody was giving away issues of our of a local role-playing fanzine and inside this fanzine there was a review of the Malazan series. So that piqued my curiosity and I said uh, when I stumbled upon a copy of uh, the first uh, book, Gardens of the Moon, I got it and I read it. That's back in 2004 I believe. So yeah, I go a long way back with Malazan. And actually, I finished this series, I think, in 2014. So it took me 10 years, uh, a book per year. Uh, question number two, describe your experience reading it for the first time. Well, I've only read it one time. Uh, Gardens of the Moon intrigued me. It was um, one of the first uh, fantasy books I've read. I started reading fantasy some, somewhere around 2003. I was reading a lot of Ferris Silvatore, and then I went to Conan and Elric, some of the classic stuff. So Malazan was probably my second or third modern, because can you call a 90s book modern anymore? Modern fantasy book, more epic, uh, doorstopper kind of fantasy. The other one was A Game of Thrones. I've read those two books almost back to back. And I was intrigued by Guards of the Moon. I was not quite sure about, I wasn't quite sure what was happening, but I lacked enough to take the bait and uh, get uh, Dead House Gates. I read the book in three days because I was young and bored and there was no mobile internet back then to keep us occupied with pings and apps and all kind of stuff. And at uh, the final third of uh, Dead House Gates, uh, it won me over. Uh, the Chain of Dogs was just epic and I just loved it. So I went for Memories of Ice and it was all killer, no filler. This book is probably one of the best Malazan books but that's a later question and then i read house of chains in i think we're in 2006 or 7 at this point and i was like uh, fuck this shit i really did not like house of chains the first 200 pages with Carsa or long hulking around being a mini and going Carsa's mass was too tiring for me i was not that much fun of the remaining of the zimbaki's bloodlines so i was the series on hold then in 2010 i went to a used bookstore and i stumbled upon midnight tides along with uh, last wish by Andrzej Sapkowski. I got those two books together, I believe, or close together, and uh, I read Midnight Tides, which was in another continent that was lost in the beginning. Where is this happening? Uh, but by then we had it, and so I could check that, yes, it's a third continent, and it's uh, years before. And I was intrigued again. It was a very good book, Midnight Tides. So I looked up, I saw that the final book is coming out in 2011, so as soon as The Cripple Girl came out, I went out, I bought all uh, the remaining five books, and after reading The Bone Hunters, I was uh, hooked and I had to finish uh, this series. So from 2012 to 2014, I was reading them and thoroughly enjoying them. And I believe that the second time around will be much more interesting because I have an idea of what is happening in the background on things we haven't seen up until the end of the books. So my first experience, it was it was not an easy ride. It was a long, arduous ride. And we come to the third question, which is the most pertinent to my experience of reading it the first time because as I said, the first books, they were great, but they don't win me over. The question number three is, when did you realize the series was going to be an all-time favorite? And it took me quite a lot of time. I think that somewhere in... Uh, I think that somewhere around reading Reader's Gale, I finally got it. Um, because when I started reading Malazan, I was kind of new fantasy and very excited about it. By the time I finished it, I was totally jaded with uh, most fantasy. 
and bored by the cliches and the repetition of the genre. Suddenly, reading the book, I know maybe it had been the Bone Hunters, it was around that era, but there were the fantasy books that kept me interested because they were doing things different. There is a great video by Andy Smith about uh, the postmodernism in Malas and Book of the Fallen. And I'm not a humanities guy, I'm not that uh, aware of what postmodernism is exactly and literary theory. But what I uh, noticed is that it was much more different than every fantasy I've read before. It took many of the conventions of fantasy and threw them away or changed them for something different. And it was the moment I said, I really love the series and I have to finish it. And maybe have uh, some of the rougher passes I have to go through and just finish it. And question number four, what is your favorite aspect of the series? Um, it's the fact that it's not your everyday Tolkien-esque uh, or Robert Howard-esque fantasy. It's something much more. It elevates the genre to, it, to its limit and exceeds the limits of fantasy in a way because it takes all the traditional stuff we like about fantasy, the heroes, the villains, the magic, the gods, the quests, traveling around and empires at war and it makes the most out of it. It takes a story, that's a story of a world and through our characters we see this epic struggle of gods and it never, never feels small. It's always big and complicated and the world feels so alive. So what's my favorite aspect of the series is that it transcends the limitations of most of modern fantasy. Five, question number five, nothing is truly perfect. It's a little gripe you have with Malazan. Uh, in my video about why you should read Malazan Book of the Fallen, I said that I hated the inner monologues and that's my gripe really. And it's not that much that the character tend to have inner monologues, it's how their voices are not distinct enough during those monologues. And while Steven Erickson did a great job with everything else, and okay, sometimes the pacing suffers a little, it drags a little, but it's no big problem because in retrospect it makes sense. It's about sending stuff that will come out much, much later, or it's about how it's realistic to be. I mean, sometimes people that have to, I don't know, cross a desert while they're hunted by their captors, they have to stay hidden in its nervous experience. And sometimes these uh, long, uh, slow parts of people working and talking and not having exciting things done, it's part of feeling the world and how it weighs upon them. So yeah, that's not much of a Right, but then again, I'll see about that in the rereads. So, yeah, my gripe is the inner monologues. Question six What are your favorite and least favorite installments? You can choose more than one if you can decide. Well, my favorites are definitely Memories of Ice because it was a great book, and uh, it's either Bone Hunters or Repairs Gale because. These are the books where everything comes together. As for my least favorites, it's uh, House of Chains because of the big uh, cars um, parts that were very long and the character is very sympathetic. I still don't like Cars that much. I want to read his upcoming trilogy, of course. But Carsa was probably my least favorite character, him and uh, I think Heborik. Him and Heborik are my least favorite characters, so... If you have uh, very heavy parts with those two in the book, ah, Carsa I grew to like, and Heborik, I realized what was his part. So I'm looking forward to reread those uh, the parts of those two and see if I cannot still stand them. And also, I think that All the Hounds is my least, one of my least favorite books too, because uh, it felt like we went outside of uh, our main plot and we were tying up loose threads instead of going straight towards the two final books, so I felt like restless while reading it. It felt like it was it didn't exactly matter in the big uh, picture of things. Again, reading this may change my mind, but Todd Hound was um, one of the, my least favorite books. Question number seven, how many times have you read the series? Once. I'm looking forward for the second. Question number eight. Besides Mals and Book of the Fallen, what other series from the Malazan world have you read? Actually, I haven't read any other book outside of the Malazan Book of the Fallen decalogy. I was planning to read the prequels, the Karkana's trilogy, when it was out 
all three books were out, uh, and uh, I feel bad about this because Stephen Erickson had a Facebook post some time ago, some months ago, and said I will not publish the third one because the sales are abysmal. And I feel guilty because if I had bought and read the books, maybe that were, that would be different. But it's not Stephen's fault. I mean, the d guy was right, was writing machine. He had a book out every eighteen months. He was right on schedule. It's other people who started writing series and were still waiting for the books years and years. You know the names, you can think of the names, burnt me out. So I'm not planning to re to start any unfinished fantasy series. And I'm currently reading uh, Night of Nows by Ian C. Esselmont. Yes, expect a review for it before the year ends. Question number nine. What are your reading interests beyond Malazan? I read a lot of horror. I read fantasy too. I mostly like heroic fantasy, older stuff like uh, Conan or Elric or Fritz Lieber, the uh, Langmar books. I like uh, Terry Prasset a lot and um, I also read science fiction and uh, some thrillers here and there and I read superhero comics and comics in general. Question number 10. What advice would you give a first time reader? Relax and enjoy the, the ride. If you don't understand something, don't worry, it, it's not there for you to understand it. And for the love of God, please don't go into any weakest trying to find out things you don't understand because you'll be spoiled and being spoiled is bad. My lesson is a trip and as you read stuff find out more tidbits of story here and there and more explanations things will click together and this is so satisfying. So don't worry just take the first book which is not the one I'm holding it's my books are back my books are back there as you can see uh, take the first book and start reading and enjoy and take some mental notes here and there. But you'll see some names getting repeating over and over. Find out who they are and what's so important about them and maybe you'll miss some of them too. And that's part of the fun of Malazan, that it's a much, it's a series, but the entirety of it is much larger than its parts. So despite some books not being five star reads for me, some books are three star reads. Most of the books are four star reads for me, but the entire series is a big glowing five star because its totality and sense fantasy as a genre. It does something different, something uh, quite interesting, something nobody else has done in my experience, at least no mainstream author has ever done in fantasy. And it's a book uh, I would suggest you enjoy. As I said, uh, the next two years I'm doing a reread of the series. Of course, there'll be videos about it. I'm doing this along with uh, the Read along of Malazan by Mike's uh, book reviews, and I suggest if you are interested in Malazan Book of the Fallen, and you want to read this uh, series, join us. Subscribe for you know for these updates that will come next year and the year after, as long as there is uh, Planet Earth, because. Uh, the way 2020 went, I'm not quite sure uh, the world will be placed by 2022. Or maybe, you know, we'll have more time at home, so more reading, yay. Subscribe if you're interested in the Mal Malazan reread and the video updates. Um, like this video, I know, and if you are a content creator and you've read any of the Malazan books or all the Malazan books, Feel free to do this tag. Uh, yeah, I hope that's it. That was the video for today. I think I rambled a lot. And I'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. <laughs>